All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, DSA. Understanding DSA has been a nightmare for me. But then I found this Visual Studio extension that draws data structure in real time as we debug the code. So, you will see pointers and indices change step by step. So, the logic becomes visual and the bugs pop out instantly. So, if you are someone preparing for DSA, then this video is for you. All right. With this said, with this context said, let's get started with the video. All right. So I've got this little program over here that is for checking if a string is palindrome or not. What is a palindrome string? A palindrome string is a string where string reads the same. Either you read it from left or you read it from right. So for example, race car over here is a palindrome string. If you read it from left, it is going to spell race car. And if you read it from the right, it is going to still spell race car. So it is a palindrome string. Okay. Now I've written this function. Let's quickly understand this function, what it does. I've got this function palindrome palindrome that takes in a string object. And then it is doing a for loop where it has got this variable i or a pointer for this matter or for this very case over here. And then I've got another pointer called i rev. This pointer i starts from the 0th index and this pointer i rev starts from the str length minus i. That means from the far end. So i starts from this r whereas the i rev starts from this r. Okay. And then I'm going to check if the value at index i and the value at index i rev if they are not the same, then this is definitely not a palindrome string. And if uh, for all the iterations, if none of this condition holds, at no times this condition satisfies, then it is definitely a palindrome string. So a pretty straightforward approach, you know, for checking a palindrome, I believe most of you should know it. But if not, this is a very straightforward code. You can easily understand it. All right. So that is the case. And... I know it in my mind that how this works, but what if we could actually visualize how it is actually, you know, doing or or how my pointers are actually traveling from one end and from the other end. So in order to see that in action, there is this extension called debug visualizer. Okay, I'm going to install this. All right, now you see this, this little diagram over here. They're actually showing how this works, okay? So once that is installed, let's come back. And now let's try to run this program. Let me add a breakpoint first of all, okay, over here. And let's run and debug this and let's see. Okay, so my debugger has come up over here. And once it has done, I'm going to hit Command Shift P on my keyboard and look for debug visualizer new view i'm going to hit that and let me close this chat window over here okay and now what i want is i want first of all i want the str to come up okay so it is saying race car but what i want is it should come as an array uh, it should come as array so when I, once I choose this, it comes up like this. If I choose this, it comes up this. And if I do a two string, I will see a simple two string. And I think the best would be if I, you know, if I keep it as array, as a grid. Cool. So this is my race car. Now I also need to figure out or, or I also need to add you know, I also need my i and i ref pointers to be present over here. Now, how do I do that? So, let me first destructure this. Okay, something wrong. All right, so once I destructured it, I got this option to uh, choose marked grid from array. And once I did that, I can see that my entire array is destructured. This 0, 1, 2, till 6 are the indices of each of the characters over here. 
and i is the pointer over here now because this execution has been stopped at this line it is not showing i rev right now but if i move a one line forward i will see that i rev has started coming okay but it is not showing me at the sixth index right so i get to, i am able to catch my first bug i should not start my i rev from str dot length minus one i should instead start it from minus i minus one right so once i picture this i am very able to understand i am very easily able to understand what is wrong so if i now execute this line i would run into a null pointer exception so let me fix that okay and let me rerun it okay now let's move a step forward and yes my i rev as is at the correct index at the sixth position all right now let's move forward okay so because they were not equal it did not go inside the if condition let's move forward and now you see now i is turned to one and i has actually moved over here let's move forward a little more and we see that i rev has also now changed its position it has come from six to five and we can you know we can keep this running and we'll see that i and i rev are actually changing positions okay so this should be it now let's move forward a one more time okay so now we are again moving forward we actually don't need it okay so this is how we can actually if we are able to visualize it we can also improve it right so i don't really want it to move forward with like we have already checked right zero has been checked against six one has been checked against five two has been checked against four and three has been checked against three so we do not want i to move forward in to to its right and uh, after the third index and i rev to move forward again after the third index we we don't really want that that is not a very optimized code so let's stop it and instead it should only go up to length by 2 so that is a little more optimization now let's run it again and okay cool so one is being verified against 5 they are same so we should not go in now i i has been changed to 2 and this and now it should move one more time and after that it should not move yes all right so if we are actually able to uh, you know if we are able to visualize our code probably we'll be writing a little more efficient code or a, a little more less buggy code and also improve our dsa scripts cool All right. Now let's look at a linked list and how we can actually visualize some nodes over there. Okay. All right. So this is a simple linked list that I have written over here. It has got a few functions: append, and then insert after. That is going to insert a node after a given data, and then insert before. That is going to insert a data before a given data. All right. Cool. And then this is how I am calling them. I am first calling the append method. That is just going to add some integer into a new linked list. then there is a insert after call and then an insert before method call okay so now let's run this and see that debug visualizer in action and i have added a breakpoint have i yes okay cool so let's run this and i've got my breakpoint hit over here let me open the debug visualizer by hitting control shift p command and here we get it now this is supposed to be my linked list over here so i'm going to say this hit enter and from this i am going to choose object graph and i can see a linked list coming up over here okay cool let's move forward and we see a new node which has got data 10 coming up and i actually did this call for data for a appending 10 so i think it is correct cool let's move forward it is going to come to this append 20 and it is going to append that now Okay cool so we see that 10 has been added and then after that 20 was added and yes it moves forward again and then it will add 30 now cool so 30 has also been added and we can also interact with it make it a little more streamlined so that we understand it all right now there's one more thing i would like to show you 
I can actually add a label to this. I'll show you how what I'm saying. So mm, let me call it this. And now when I do this, I get another option that says object graph with pointers. So let me do that. And now I get this little pointer or this little label kind of thing that points me, okay, your this is actually the link list. Quite cool, right? Let's move forward. So it is not going now going to append 40, I think. Gonna be 50. Yeah, so 40 it has done. Then it is going to append 50. Let me make it fast. Cool. So we could see that objects were added. Now let's see what happens inside an insert after method. So I'm on this insert after method. Let's go in. And we are back with the link list that we had. Okay, let me make it here. So it's quite floaty in nature. So you'll have to play with it. Okay. Okay, so it keeps floating. The nodes keep floating all by themselves. All right, now there are two more things, element after and element before. Let me add them over here. And so we can, you know, understand it a little more. So I'm going to say element before. And that should point to this thing over here. And let me also add element after and that should point to element after over here right okay let me move it one more step and over here okay let me refresh it i think it has lost the context okay something wrong uh, yeah okay so element after and element before Labels have come up, the pointers have come up. Now, because they were null, they are not really pointing to anything. But if you look at this method call that we did, it should it is calling the list dot insert after 20, 25. So it should insert 25 after 20. So this is my 20 node. And if I move forward one more time. So you see, this is my element before. Now this is the element before and This is my element after. All right. So what I wanted was I wanted to insert 25 after 20. My current pointer is, uh, you know, so my element before is this, my element after is this. And let's see what happens next. Now a new node is created. It has been given the next pointer. It has been given the data. And we see things in action now. Oops. So element before is this and then element after is this and it is and it is able to add this 25 over here. Let me move forward and yes, the loop ends. So I think this was it pretty much. I hope this was very, you know, something that would help you to understand your DSA concepts. Now, this has got several other things. You can explore it yourself. I have tried stack. I have tried binary trees also. Uh, but the only language I have tried is JavaScript. You can, of course, play around and try other languages. And just let me know how it feels. How How is it for other languages? All right. So this is it then. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please don't forget to like, share this video. And consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.